ಸಹನೋ ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂಕರ ಬಾಬಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾವಿದ್ವಿಷಾಬಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ chapter 15 the state of self realization we have seen his intrinsic being under that we saw five aspects power love knowledge self sufficiency and his fulfillment now what he is doing is is moving to how that state how that man of realization lives his life what is his lifestyle after the merger with the self after that enlightenment how they live what is his outer behavior conduct lifestyle etc what is what is happening how they how they live let's see yes new book page 246 his extrinsic conduct self realized souls have demonstrated a wide range of extrinsic conduct their post realization lives have been distinct and different yet they all remain intrinsically as the one self like the brilliant spectrum of colors emerging from colorless light each color exhibits a beauty of its own so does every enlightened one display a distinct magnificence beautiful and graceful their actions however differ widely though they all spring from the depth of spiritual enlightenment from the one divine self thus you find a marked difference in the external manifestation of divine souls from time immemorial even the recent sages like swami ramatirtha saint tyagaraja or ramana maharishi were poles apart in their manifestations Ramana Maharishi observed silence practically all his lifetime. He hardly moved out of his small town of Tiruvannamalai in South India, while Saint Tyagaraja gave out the divine Carnatic music. He sang all through his life. Distinct from these two, Swami Ramatirtha was dynamic. He enthralled the world with his electrifying discourses on Vedanta. you ought not to judge sages and saints from what you see them act their expressions in the world may confuse you and you would perhaps rather gather wrong impressions perfection in a human is assessed not from his external action but from internal attunement with the supreme self the test of perfection is his merger with the inner self not his expression whatever be the mode of living the self realized leads humanity through the path of righteousness to the goal of enlightenment some sages have lived in seclusion observing austerity while others lived in company amidst material comfort however both were totally detached disinterested in their mode of living reveling in the bliss of realization their lives only promoted universal welfare redeemed humanity the enlightened one lives in his home with his family amidst his environment with perfect objectivity established in the divinity within he remains absolutely detached he takes the position of god he is in the world yet out of it like a lotus leaf unattached to the water all around 
He looks at every being and everything happening in the world from an impersonal angle, as you would watch a movie on the screen. When you look upon the world as a detached witness, the world becomes a source of enjoyment. But when you get involved, entangled in the affairs of the world, the same world becomes a source of misery. The enlightened is ever positioned as a Sakshi witness, never attached to anything, never enmeshed in the world. He stands out as a picture of renunciation, reveling in absolute bliss. The ignoramuses do not look into people's intrinsic nature. They are carried away by external demonstrations. They make a great blunder in considering pseudo-spiritual persons as evolved souls. Some of these charlatans perform all sorts of fantastic feats. They are known as spiritualists who read a book blindfolded, repeat another's thoughts, communicate with departed souls, demonstrate such sensational acts. All that does not render them wholly spiritual. They are just as worldly as others except for having learned a special art. It may be admired as a skill, technique. There is nothing more to it. A spiritualist can claim no more divinity, knowledge of self than a brilliant technician can. Some Hatha yogis are known to have buried themselves alive in a coffin. Others have swallowed razor blades, drawn needles through the skin, performed many such feats. But these men are far from being spiritual and their feats have nothing to do with the divine state brought about by the knowledge of self. There have been instances of such men having committed crimes, even convicted by the state. However, history has shown some true sages possessing this art, the skill of performing great feats. They learnt it only to draw people to educate them in the knowledge of Brahman the Supreme God. However, the knowledge of this art is in no way related to their spiritual status. What he is doing here is he is giving two points. Essentially, there are two points here. The first one he says is, even though the inner state of all those people being same, their external behaviors differ. That's the first thing he says. First thing he establishes is that the inner state is same, but external contact, their lifestyles differ. Number one. Number two, enlightenment doesn't confer any mystical powers. These are the two points he is establishing first. First one he says this, second one he gives is this. So what is the difference there, sir? Do not, you know, there is no mystical powers that you, you get. But the whole world, if not the whole world, 99.9% .9 of people who go to spiritual, I'm talking about those, the spiritual people, so-called, get drawn towards a master only for such feasts says, do not get carried away by these things. Don't get carried away by the such miracles, mysticism. So whatever you do, you cannot create a, a Swiss made watch from thin air, no? Because the watch says Swiss made. Because I saw one man showing me. You know, he gave me this watch. First thing I did was I turned that side. You know, the you know, other side of the watch, you know, they would be make mar marking, you know, the brand name, country of, you know, where all that is printed there. I said, how can these things get be, be, be printed? It's not possible, no. Of course, that man got angry with me and he, you know, dropped me. He said, get out of the house. Of course, I, I discussed all these things after I had the meal there, not before the meal. Because before the meal, if I said that means I knew. 
I, I, I would have lost one meal. Is this why? Because of this is what we think, you know, because we believe a spiritual person means enlightened master means he must be doing some, some things like this, miraculous things. Now, what is it's a, it's a very interesting, you know, psychology to see what, what is it that takes you to an enlightened master anticipating miracles. We say, no, no, sir, I am not asking any miracles from him. You know, if you, if, you, if you go and ask anyone, are you expecting a miracle to happen? They'll say, no, 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 I am not expecting any miracle from him. Then what do they do actually? Why do you look for such miracles? Why do you fall for these things? I have been having a stomach pain for the last five years. I have visited very many doctors. They all gave up. They said, we don't know because we have scanned your stomach. We have seen everything. Everything looks normal to us. We don't know why there is pain. So we have to do more investigations, more things we have to check. So uh, come back, come back, come back. So I go to this hospital, I go to that hospital, I go to this doctor, to that doctor. I'd been doctor, 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 nothing has worked. Now I go to this master and surrender. What do they expect now? Why do you go to him? You think you would wish he will give one vibhuti or he will give one spoon of water. You drink that, you smear that vibhuti, what should happen to you? Your stomach pain should disappear. If that happens, then that master becomes the most popular master in the world. After that, we can't do classes in Zoom now. Forget it. There will be a long queue standing here. For what? To have darshan, they say. That's what that man would say, that Kanchi Acharya. Suddenly he will decide to go into his room. He will not give any darshan and all that. He will simply go inside. Those are, people asked him, you know, why do you do like that? People have come far off. Say, say, you think I am here as an exhibition or what? Think, uh, exhibition or what? You come and have darshan and go. Now what is going to happen? And we believe what? I go there, I see him, come back. That is a... Now, now, one look he gave me and what had happened this, that, all such, you know, is all a sign of weakness, remember. But we do believe that, you know, there are people who have this, you say. Uh, this is where, you know, some people, you know, some enlightened masters have demonstrated. You know, some of them had demonstrated some powers, you know, here and there. But then what you need to understand is that power has got nothing to do with that state of their enlightenment. You see, that has got nothing to do with it. And that power, no way they say will solve your problems if you go to them. If you go to him for advice, if you go to him for, if you surrender to him, he will never say this to, I, he would say, Gain this knowledge, that knowledge will protect you. That knowledge will protect you. That same power that I have, the same is what you will also have. Yes. But what we need to understand is this is, this is nothing to do with their things. It's not that power, you no, know, they'll have some mystical power. Have. If one man came to Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. I have told this several times. And he 
there is a huge crowd near the temple and nobody is there inside that everyone has gone to the you know, banks They're near the you know, banks they were all standing there and watching this man because he has told that i will walk on water and come in and he walked and he came and he had come to see not the devi he has come to see ramakrishna parmahamsa to show him you know what what he has achieved so when he came ramakrishna and this man came and told you know i am the person who came he said okay asked him how many years it took you to master this he said 17 years and he turned around to his disciples and asked them how long how much it cost to ferry across he said two annas to ferry uh, both men charges two annas means something like 50 paise today you know annas you may not know it is you know 50 paise something like that you know one anna is 6 paise actually speaking if i if my memory is correct yes something like that is here some amount i don't i don't know how much because i wasn't there i'm ridiculous amount so ramakrishna paramsa looked at this man and said your 17 years of effort worth this 50 paise because to ferry across you give to the boatman he would have brought you right Now, this has got nothing to do with your spiritual status. See, but there's a whole crowd standing there. Never there was a crowd for this. So people ask, you know, sir, how do we know that you know somebody is enlightened, somebody is not enlightened? How do we know? I tell them there are few, you know, parameters. You know, I have, which is not there in the book. It's not here, but it's there only. But you will not find it if you search you will not find one of the factors i give the first point one of the points of course there are i have my own list see first point i give the list wherever there is a crowd understand 99% this man is not enlightened there's no enlightenment first that is a law of enlightenment because you go there when crowd will go only for that instant you know you have to take that medication you have to do this you have to do that take that pay the fees man you have to pay to the doctor and the fees for every you know visit you go is 5000 rupees and then they give you the test test to be done is so much whereas this man free of charge he will not charge you and he will give you one vibhuti and whatever you want to give you can give if you don't give also he is not going to say anything freely he is going to cure your disease obviously where will you go that's what he is giving is the enlightenment is not it's not these things but then we do see those masters living varied life it's not that all the masters are living same no two enlightened masters are same you will never find that and there are people who say that enlightened masters reincarnated this there is no reincarnation for those enlightened masters don't think that krishna will come back you know every yuga yeah, krishna will not that is gone you see they will not use that body that is gone forever because if krishna has to come back he has to come back with the peacock feather this is a blue color imagine today a man comes with a blue color a uh, peacock feather and all you think drama artist you put him inside you will think you know he has some skin disease you will not you know will you give your daughter the fellow who is full blue hmm? who will give they forget it will say you know some problem is there you know no 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 leave him alone straight away not qualified right now what will you do 
there is no reincarnation for those people so they don't come back i don't think that you know they are coming back reincarnation but then they do say that you know i come back but when they say that they is not meaning that he is going to come back what he means is the unbroken chain of enlightened masters appear time and again to guide humanity to guide the seekers to help them that is what he means it doesn't mean you know he is going to come back we think you know he is going to come back that that is gone you know see for you to understand reincarnation you need to understand incarnation first incarnation means birth reincarnation rebirth incarnation means appearance reincarnation means reappearance do they reappear they don't reappear then who re who is going to be doing reappearing it is only the individuals only the jeevas those who have the jeevatvam alone have the reincarnation there is no reincarnation for those people but uh, we have our own idea a reincarnation means he will come as the same person even if einstein were to take a rebirth reappear he is not going to be having that same iq he will also go to the school and you know the teacher will break the knuckles don't know this much in mathematics what is 2 plus 7 hmm hmm she will say now he can't tell her you know who i am that's gone you know that you know there is no reappearance they are not going to come back with that same acumen that is not possible please because you keep re you keep changing keep moving keep moving keep moving why do you go on and on and on and on is to understand reincarnation first our detailed study we will do when we go into that you know law of kar- karma causation law of causation in that chapter there is a detailed study there now we don't need that much of details just a basic understanding of what is it Re- why do you have to reincarnate why do you have to come again sir incarnation mean birth happen birth simple language why does a birth happen your desires forcing or seeking fulfillment that's all your desires are seeking fulfillment the desires fulfillment to happen it needs a equipment without an equipment a desire cannot find its fulfillment so the desire seeking fulfillment picks up a particular set of equipment body that is called incarnation that's called birth when you take that embodiment what are you supposed to do in that embodiment remember this will help you for the next one that uh, that's why i'm telling you now itself you know next point when you go there it will help you there the once you take birth once you get into a particular embodiment once you are in this body in this body what do you do develop various associations relationships attachments skill sets all that you develop for what only to fulfill your desires why do you do all those things only to fulfill your desires only trying to get that fulfillment through these things all this happens and it goes on and on and on at somewhere down the line at a particular point of time you do realize you do understand that that relationships that you have developed the attachments that you have developed the skills that you have developed that knowledge that you have gained all that is not helping you to 
fulfill the desires. So this is not helping. So when it is not helping, what you will do? You are in a village. Living in village is not helping you to fulfill your desires. Now what you what you did? You move to a town. In that town you live for some time and then you realize this is not helping you to fulfill your desires. What you what did you do? You move to a city. Then you move to a metro city. Then you move to another country. And then what you do? You come back to that country. And then what you do? You go back to your village again. Why? Because now the desires that you have cannot be fulfilled in that country. Therefore, you come back to that old country. Again, will it help you to fulfill that in that metro city? No, no, no. Now the desires can be fulfilled only by living in a village. Therefore, what you do? You go to the village. You know, keep doing that. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. So all your lifetime, what you have been doing means you're moving from one place to environment to environment. You keep changing. Why? Because you are seeking fulfillment. Your desires are seeking to be fulfilled. When the same thing happens from body to body, that is called reincarnation. Right. Enlightenment means what? You have seen already. The last point of enlightenment is what? Intrinsic being. He is fulfilled. Once he is fulfilled, where will he go? Can he go? Can he reincarnate? Because for reincarnation, you need that essential unfulfillment, seeking fulfillment. Now he is already fulfilled. Now how that realized soul will reappear as this realized soul. And people also buy, buy that idea. They claim, you know, I am the reincarnation of that enlightened master. And people buy that also. They say, yeah, correct, correct. One fellow came and told me, you know, brought one book long time back. You, know, said, you should read this, you know, this enlightened master, this master, enlightened man, this, you know, liberated soul, something and all he said. I told him first stop that because you have no clue about enlightenment. I have no clue about enlightenment. That much I know. I know two things. I said, one, I know that you don't know. Also, I know that I don't know. Now, both of us sitting on a, on a, on a debate and a discussion about the thing that both of us have no clue about. I said, throw that. No, but this, this is such a, you know, no, billions of copies sold. That means there is no truth in it. Because truth cannot be sold like that. Miracle. You want miracles to happen. That's what happened to Christ also. You know that, no? When he was put on cross, none of his disciples were there. All deserted. You know, none of them. The Last Supper, you know, Peter was coming and washing the feet. And he had that arrogance. Even now they say, the gates of heaven, Peter is the one who is standing. It's only he will allow you inside. I, say, I don't know why. Because when he was washing the feet and he was believing himself to be the greatest disciple of Christ. He is the best you know, of, of all those people. Our best. Who? Peter. Christ told him before the roaster crows three times, you will deny, deny me. 
you are the first one to deny me. And it actually happened. Peter denied him. You see. Why? And he was put on cross. What, 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 what was their thinking at that point? They were all expecting some miracle will happen there. They didn't believe that he is. But suddenly they saw this man dying like any other human. You see, that's why they couldn't connect. This, this lady is the only one, that Mary Magdalene is the only one who stood there with him. Fascinating. I'm not saying I'm only repeating what is there, okay? I'm not adding anything. Why they are not? Because they expected him, but this man is just like that, like anyone else who would die. Because suddenly he thought, you know, there will be a storm coming. Suddenly something will descend from heaven and somebody will come and destroy that entire that Roman, you know, the kings and this, all those people will die and then he will come out. Yeah. Nothing happened. He just died. And after three days, they didn't even come to check actually. They are all, you know, hiding. They are all running away because the government is in search of who have been the disciples of Christ. Check. Find out. So they were all hiding. This lady comes suddenly. She says, the master had appeared again. They, they say, you are a mad lady, get out. It's there. Huh? They are not willing to take her words. He has come back. They are not willing to take, take, take that lady's words. And she says, no, I saw you come. She brings. And even when they saw, he didn't believe. He said, what is the proof? He is asking. It's amazing to see. What is the proof? He is asking. After resurrection, miracle has happened for him. When? That ignorance only will ask for proof. She did not check. This man checked. Show me your hand. Is there a mark of? See, the nailing has happened to the body. How can it be there in the subtle body, even if it comes as a soul? How can that, that will have a hole? Body can have a hole, correct. How will that have a hole? But he says what? Show me the proof. I wanted the proof of that. Why? That's, that is because of enlightened master means they must have some miraculous powers. See? He says, no. They don't have Enlightenment doesn't confer any miracle plus powers. They will not perform any miracles. No enlightened master will ever perform a miracle. In spite of them, they might one or two things might happen. But it's not their performing. It's not their performance. It just happens. Happening in the sense cannot be happening on a daily basis. You see, if it, if it is daily basis, then it is called art. That's what he says. Some of them have cultivated a skill, an art. Certain things you can cultivate. Like, you know, reading blindfolded. Like in Bangalore, they did, no? Group of people, blindfoldedly, they were riding a motorbike in traffic. Not empty road. In traffic, blindfolded, they perform here. It's a, it's a skill. Remember, that doesn't make that person divine. See, 
It's not that, you know, because he is doing it, oh, they are very divine people. You know, enlightenment doesn't has nothing to do with this. One point. Another point he gives is they live different lifestyles. There is no standard lifestyle. They are all enlightened. Therefore, will all, all of them have that same behavioral pattern, same lifestyle? No. They all will have varied and gives beautiful examples. Three examples, three distinct personalities. Ramana Magadishi, Kyagaraja, Ramadita are claimed to be enlightened beings. No dispute. No one can dispute about their enlightenment. But of course, it's interesting to see with reference to Ramtita, a fellow who writes a foreword to Ram Ramtita's works, says, even though I differ from many points, you see the you know, foreword. Who are you to differ with him? Says, the, very interesting to see those fellows. I don't know why these people asked him to write a foreword. You know, uh, so interesting to see. He says, even though I differ, yes, state they are all enlightened beings, but their expressions are varied. Ramana did not speak, or hardly he spoke. He didn't move out of the village. He entered Tiruvannamalai. The rest of his life, he stayed only in Tiruvannamalai. That's it. He didn't move out. Tyagaraja, singing and singing and singing and singing. That's it. Nothing else. Doesn't know anything else other than singing, composing. Because Tyagaraja is the one who has wrote the songs and set the raga also for those things. Composed it also. It's like our... Uh, Prashant Joshi plus Karela, I don't know, the musicians. Also Muhammad Rafi. All, all three put together. Because he was singing, he was composing, also he is setting, you know, Raga, Tala, all that he has fixed. As in, not just writing songs, poetry. What a contribution. Let's say every year, you know, they have this Tyagaraja Utsava. All those Carnatic music musicians, their bread and butter is because of this man. Hmm? Yeah. They can't perform any, any, any concert without his songs. Minus his songs, they have no job. It's like, imagine, without Vedanta treaties, what will I do? If at all Saraswati Puja, if I have to do, keep a book means I have to keep only Vedanta Tritis, Bhagavad Gita. Hey. Now do puja to that. Should have at least once a year. Let's say all the musicians go once a year at least to that Tagaraja Utsava in Druya. You know, they have a temple there no, for him. There they do. They're supposed to. Yeah. I don't see them, you know, most of them don't come. I mean that, you know, top artists, you know, I don't see them yeah. every year. If, we, you know, if this year they come in, next four years, four or five years, they are not there. Uh, they come because it becomes a problem for them because people start looking all these things these days. You know, so once in a while, they have to come there. Yes, that's our part, that's our politics, you know, gossip. But essentially, what we need to understand is that man just singing. Ramadirta was not singing. Electrifying audience, speaking. You have to pull words out of the mouth of Ramana Maharishi. Ramatirtha, you can't stop him talking. He is passing by a country. He doesn't know the language. He says, I'm here for seven days. 
I will learn the language and give a talk on Vedanta in that language to you. Don't worry. And he does that. He learns the language and gives them lectures on that. Talking, talking, talking. All varied. All different. But the inner state of all those people, one thing is common with all of them. In their behaviors, they all had this position as a witness. Yes. The enlightened is ever positioned as a witness, never attached to anything. That is that state. What is their behavior? How do they conduct themselves in the world? You ask, they conduct themselves as a sakshi, as a witness. So first, their lifestyles are different. Two, they conduct their extrinsic conduct. What is their extrinsic conduct, sir? Witness. Otherwise, you can never understand it. What is that state? What is that behavior? Because they are also acting exactly like you. You do your own things, they do their own things. Justin Bieber also singing. Right, no. He's also composing. Okay, Justin Bieber has composed only 20, you know, 2,000 songs. He has composed 24,000 songs. Number of songs are only different. That's about it. But otherwise, in terms of action, he's also composing, singing. He's also composing, singing. So, what is the difference? You're also lecturing. Ramadita also lecturing. What is the difference? Sometimes you are also quiet. Ramana Maharshi also quiet. Right. What is the difference? Right. Now, we people do different, different things. Same way, they also do different, different things. But in and through the differences of theirs, they maintain one stand. What is it? Sakshi. Witness. Learn that word. How you always would say it. You say, learn that word, Sakshi. Be a witness. Learn to be a witness first. What is what is being a Sakshi? Witness means performing by performing action, you realize that you are not the doer. Right now, when you start performing actions, you do have that notion of, I am the doer. The doership notion is there. In his case, there is no notion of, I am performing. Since there is no doership notion, He has no concern with reference to the consequence because he has nothing to do with the consequence of action. When I am not the doer, action continues to perform. That's the best part of it. Action continues. Then what? who is performing the action? Then what is performing the action? Actions are performed by the equipment ceases. Then who does that now? Equipments are performing. Equipments, that's all. Equipments keep doing it. Why? Because that's the nature of those equipments. They keep functioning. Nature of eye is to see, it will see. Nature of ears is to hear, it will hear. Nature of nose is to smell, it will smell. Nature of body is to act, it will act. Nature of mind is to feel, it will feel. Nature of intellect is to think, entertain thoughts. It will entertain thoughts. But I have nothing to do with it. Since the actions are getting performed by the equipments, those actions will necessarily have consequences. You can't have an action, no consequence. He says, since I have not performed the action, with reference to consequence also, I have no say. I have nothing to do with the consequences also. 
that is the stunt but best, the difficult part is from a third party it is difficult to know or for that matter it is impossible to know who is a sakshi and who is not a sakshi because externally when you look at it all of both of them the person who is with the notion of i am the doer and the person who has no such notion both of them will be functioning with the same intensity now then how will you know that that's why we need to understand what is the meaning of sakshi sakshi essentially means action continues acting only the doership being the doer is not the doership notion is is dropped action goes on in that full steam dynamic powerful actions goes on well but never attached to the result now what we do sir we get involved or inactive with reference to you know whatever happening in the world what what do we do sir we do only two things we know only two states either you are act you start action you get involved or inactive involved activity or inactivity is what we know of in him he performs the action and detached he does and detached he does the action but in a detached state so therefore how do you know sakshi the sakshi is one always in a dynamic state see there is tremendous amount of dynamism you will find in a sakshi is always flowing moving he does you you will never find a sakshi in a static state you will you will always have that freshness in him the sakshi is always a, a fresh one that's what he says no who is the most intelligent man you have met z my tailor why because it takes fresh measurements a sakshi a master an enlightened master is a sakshi why we we are static he is not static he keeps understanding flowing changing that is called dynamism for which essentially he should be having that acute alertness so sakshi means no doership means dynamic means alert now you need to have all that together no you only then we can understand what is a what is the meaning of sakshi sakshi we think you know sakshi means our you know court witness you know a court you know who can be a sakshi who can be a witness now now for witness they have six rules you know the in the smritis smritis have you know six rules for a sakshi who is a sakshi so, no court proceedings manusmriti spends about 380 verses to explain how the courts to be functioning who should be yes one king you know and you know made a rule to make a law as a panel of people who were making a law like we had you know constitutional panel all stalwarts are there and there is a constitutional head the the panel head we had you know krambedkar panel head oh sometimes i wonder what must have been inside that you know head we are also supposed to be having brain you know he also had brain 
same thing you know this is also gray out also gray everyone is saying that i say my god when you read that so this king you know made a rule like that you know he had a panel and he made a rule and then he called one man one scholar called and said evaluate it and give it back to me read that and you know give your evaluation of the law so that man took that and he took and he took about you know 3 months and he came back with his report before submitting his report this man asked the king one quick question before i submit i want to ask you a question you give me the answer for that he said yes what is it or tell me who is great those who wrote that law or the one who is evaluating is it obviously it's an obvious answer sir evaluating person is superior to which immediately that guy replied stating if that so according to you my king you should be paying me more than how much you paid them the king didn't expect that he said yeah you are correct i'll pay you but only problem is when i appointed you when i asked you to evaluate that was not the idea with which i asked because when a king is to be making a law there is a rule the rule is the law is made for the public means the entire population means in the population you will be having people of varied intelligences even the law should reach to the least intelligent person also so when i gave you that law book for you to read and come back if you can read and understand that means anyone in the country can read and understand it why because in my calculation you are the last he said and the king walked out what intelligence you have the law is to be made there he gives tremendous rules beautifully explaining you know sakshi one of the thing is a witness who can be what all the things to be treated as a witness in that there is a hierarchy now we are not discussing that we are discussing sakshi in the philosophy not law even though word is the same sakshi witness but here a witness is not to be treated in that since he is not party there he is a performer in law a sakshi cannot be a performer the one who had done the act no they have rules for such even even in our laws also we have rules for a sakshi who can be taken as a sakshi you know that no policeman cannot be taken as a sakshi that man's wife says this is what he said it will not be treated as a witness why because she is connected to him this way you know there are rules we have like that sakshi for you to identify philosophically how do you recognize sir he doesn't have that notion of i am the doer there's no aham karta no kartrutva buddhi he said therefore he is so dynamic the dynamism implies alertness alertness means what is the meaning of alertness so alert means is not dependent on the expression there's no need of a visible demonstration as a meaning of alertness the one who is lacking alertness will want that visible demonstration we say first you prove to me show me we will ask you know like hanuman i have to tear open my chest and show then we will say ah correct otherwise you are not willing to that's why you keep on asking you know 
Tell me, do you love me? Tell me, do you love me? Prove that you love me. So what I have to do? I have to remember your birthday and send a cake. I have to remember your, uh, you know, the anniversary, send this one. I have to do this, I have to say every day what I love you, I love you, I love you. Why do you want that? Because you want that repeated assertion. Why you need that is because you aren't able to see that affection, that love that is there in him or in her. You want what? Show me that. Show me that. Who will ask for that magnified things? The blind fellow. The blindness, ignorant. Sakshi is one who is so alert. Is aware. That alertness is what he, he has. It is not dependent on those things. Otherwise, you are dependent on expression. Alertness should be there. And what they do, that's what he says. What do they do? They are there. Their lives is only reveling in the bliss of realization. Their lives only promoted universal welfare, redeemed humanity. What is their lifestyle? Their lifestyle is only to universal welfare. It is only to serve others. Now, who do you serve? First of all, you should start serving. Who, who you serve? They serve. Who they serve? They serve the whole universe. They serve people who are far, 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 far inferior to their status. A very quality. Again, the problem is immediately you'll say status means you know only one thing. What is the financial status? You know anything more than that. You have no clue of emotional status. You have no clue of intellectual status. You have no idea. This is where the problem is. Every word is a problem. The moment I say they serve, um, immediately I have to explain what is the meaning of service. Now, one class has to be explained terms of who do you serve? What is the meaning of serving someone? See, that's what these topics are all, you know, better to skip and go. Read, you know, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's all. Yeah, well, this is different, this is different. All different, no, uh, yeah, all different, sir. Correct, correct, correct. Uh, then move to next one. Then move to next one. This is much easier than to go and to analyze and understand what do you mean by uh, the promoted universal welfare. What is the promotion of universal welfare? It's a simple word of service. Then again, what is the problem? What is the meaning of service, sir? Who do you serve? Now, sir, his life is only service. Does it? Then who, who, who he is going to serve? He serves people who are, are no way near him to his internal state. You, you are, we have seen that earlier, the five points. Look at his, his status internally, what is his condition, and who does he serve? That's why we call the lecture series that we organize as Yajna. He comes and delivers a lecture, one hour lecture he gives. What is the difference between he giving a lecture for one hour and a college professor giving a lecture for one hour? What is the difference? For us, for most of us, it will appear the professor lecture is more interesting because he says different, different things. But this man goes on repeating the same thing. Example also is not changing. And petrol in the car for 65 years. Ah, boring, sir. A professor's lecture. But this is service, we say. Now, what is... You know, you, we can't even understand what is 
what is that action he is acting that's why he say shishta acharya this you have to be there with them to see it have to be close enough to see it they serve who do they serve which is impossible for us to even conceive what what is what is that the inferior in terms of not in, in quantity see our understanding of status difference is quantity see he has a cycle i have a bmw that is also a vehicle this is also a vehicle what is the difference now of course there is a difference but the difference is with reference to quantity there is no qualitative difference same material only this is also material this is also material that's all there is nothing nothing much there but here far far inferior people this even though there are people with varied things the quality of his service doesn't differ from person to person the quality of his service remains the same with everyone ah uh, sakshi so what does they do now they do varied things but in and through their varied things they have two points as a constant one what is it one service another one sakshi the manner in which they do service varies from person to person nevertheless service is constant they do everything only to serve the world so see we have a very interesting tradition here you know the uh, in karnataka we have that beautiful tradition it's not there in tamil nadu here we have when we came you know we got really confused here when they give this tampula no when, when the ladies come to the house the person who is giving the tampula will be standing and the person who is taking that should be sitting why now you know why our tradition says don't ask all that you should learn to give bending down now first of all we don't give right and that too when you give you have to bend down and give now only when you give your ego is erect see when a person is sitting the giver has to bend down and give now how can you bend down and give that is called desdemona says shakespeare othello says she found a wise in her goodness she found a fault in her goodness why is in her goodness amazing one how can you find a fault with your quality of giving you know that's a height of character what is that quality of character this is the quality he serves he serves is only for to redeem humanity he may in the sense whoever goes and picks up from him that's about it now it is for us to do whatever we have to do now is got thing to do with him are we making use of him or not is up to the humanity but he is available that's where it is fascinating character on one hand you find them so arrogant so much so much of you know self conceit no compromise on the other hand you find those people going to the extremes to serve this this is what i say contradiction you will you know only when you go closer you will see such contradictions you are standing far away we can never see such contradiction and if you don't see you will never learn you will never grow 
the moment you see you get confused and leave that's why we go oblivious to such masters that is why i said one of the criteria i have is this if there is a crowd take it for granted that man is not why because you don't find such contradictions in them now one hand you find him like this other hand he goes to extremes to help somebody he'll bend down to such an extent it will look like you know no a man of self respect will do such a thing with basic values the basic self respect also you don't behave like this one side on the other side he demonstrates said such arrogance he puts up you know puts a face of such a thing one side on this side if you are standing next to him and watching him you are finished ideal thing is stay away because you go closer to him go like this that's why he is explaining this topic why this topic we have to take it up is yes. even though we know by the understanding is extrinsic behavior la you cannot understand you can't understand them at all there is no way but still these points will give us some amount of inspiration because we do need such inspirations for us to take it up for us to progress we need that you know prompts to pursue the path that's why we are studying all this otherwise there is no necessity uh, you know enormous people they don't come anywhere near if at all they come near they come for wrong reasons and the moment they try to you know slightly move away from those wrong reasons you come to the right reasons you get into trouble first what does it now you will see tremendous contradiction what if basic contradiction itself is this because as far as we are concerned sakshi means you should not be you should be a non performer performer means involvement straight away you will see a contradiction in him as a sakshi he will be our understanding of service i have told you this uh, you know uh, car we give for washing cleaning you know this one after they finish the job they call back and say sir can you rate our service i said what service you did i said you never did service they said no 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 sir you have taken the car she got scared you know whether somebody has just taken my car you know this i said you have delivery and has, has happened i said yeah that has happened but the moment i have paid right how do you call that a service you charge right you tell me sir if you want to do the job this much for this job this much for this job this much now you want me to do vacuum inside this much you want to do or you want me to do this you know the chemical wash then this much and you do the chemical job for the money that i have paid i have paid fully 1500 rupees you charge me i have paid fully and you are supposed to do the chemical wash of the entire car you have done that fully what is the service you have done and today we have started thinking of service is equal to what if for the amount that you have paid you have done the job what you are supposed to do for that they are asking rate us our service up said service itself means irrespective of what is there i do my job that is called service irrespective of the response irrespective of what the other person is doing you continue to do that's why we give the example rose immediately you say rose has no life tell us something you know which we can now now what to do forget it we'll say and go to the next paragraph you see this is the problem of us that's so why you got to see them serving only when you see them serving us we can understand what it is to serve as a sakshi if you serve 
If at all you become a sakshi, means we have a wrong idea. And then be a sakshi in service is, is their extrinsic conduct. Remember, what is their extrinsic conduct, sir? Their extrinsic conduct is as a witness, they serve. As a sakshi, they continue their service. That is the extrinsic conduct. Rest are all just, you know, details. Remember that. Rest are all just details. You know, then he goes to other aspects, why there is a difference in their lifestyle and all, that is all details. The essential point, what is his extrinsic conduct? What, do, what is their behavior? What is their, what do they do? They do what, sir? They act. What is action they perform? Yajna, service. Their whole life is just one mass of yajna, service. And they serve as what? As a witness, as a sanction. See you in the next class.